Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea England. I'm a pre-K teacher for the Lebanon Special School District here in Lebanon, Tennessee. And I'm here today to talk to you about the Sounds First foundational skills. We started using the supplemental curriculum of the Sounds First activities last year amidst the pandemic and we use them through virtual, through hybrid, through traditional school. And at first, when we first found out we had something else we were adding to curriculum, you had that immediate worry of, is this going to work? Is it going to be effective for my students? Is it going to be a lot of extra work for me? And let me just tell you, it works. It really does. So if you have that nervousness about it, just do it. Just jump right in there and you will see those results. So we during the traditional school year, this was something that I implemented during my transition times. It is scripted for you. It's prepared. It's not going to take extra work for you. When they would be on the carpet and we would be moving from whole group to tables or vice versa, we would just get out our activities. I would read through them. We would do them together. And it was it was easy and simple and effective. And I want to show one tip that we use. We had these awesome cards. We have a pre-K coach, Mandy Pittman, who worked with the state of Tennessee, who worked on getting some of these ready for us, and they are perfect for transition. So she has taken some of the activities that you'll see in the Sounds First curriculum, and up here at the top, you can see the day, the week, which one it is, and you can flip through, and it gives you the silly sentences that you're going to be using. This is a great thing to do when your kids are lining up, going to the restroom. It takes two minutes and you're not wasting time. The kids are involved, engaged, and learning, even on a restroom break. It's great. I do want to talk for just a minute about ways you can use it if you're not in the classroom. It's best, of course, if they're there, we're all learning together. But in these crazy times, if you're not virtually, it's also a great transition tool there. So when we were in hybrid and virtual settings last year, we would be doing our Google Meets together. I would use that as my transition between activities. So just as if I was in the classroom, we would stop something, use that as our focus to transition, and then move on to another activity. And they were repeating it right after me, just like what we were doing in class. We were snatching sounds together. We were clapping, and it was keeping them engaged, and they were also learning. So not only is it effective and not only do they have fun with it, but I want to give a student a success story that it was so exciting to see. So in pre-K, as most of you know, I'm sure if you're out there teaching pre-K kids, our standards have rhyming in March. Somewhere along that, it's something that we want to work on, but when we do our scope and sequence, normally in the progression of learning, we teach those rhyming skills around February or March, along with Dr. Seuss sometimes um, in Read Across America Week. Well, this past January, one of my students got to school and was so excited to tell me that he was playing the rhyming game in the car with his Mimi. And so I asked him to explain. I said, oh, well, what's the rhyming game? Tell me more about that. And he said, oh, well, Miss Chelsea, we do this in class when we're rhyming with all of our silly sentences and when we're giving you rhyming words. Um, and he was talking about syllables, but he and his Mimi were in the car playing a game together. He would say, oh, I see a tree. Tree rhymes with B. Do you have a rhyming word for this? So they're so excited about their learning that they're taking this back home with them, doing it outside of school, as well as making those connections between school and home. So if you're worried or anxious, just do it with fidelity. Just jump right in, make it your own. You will see success and you will see learning. And I hope that that answers some questions if you might have had some. And I hope that you're excited to be using these foundational skills in your classroom. Bye.